Hello everybody, welcome to vlog number five in this development series. You can see somebody's engaging in combat in the distance there. Um, first off, I just want to apologize for the weird editing in this video. Um, I actually had to pre-record the footage on another computer uh, due to technical uh, difficulties, and now I am commentating on top of the video uh, as sort of a post-production type of thing. But as an added bonus, uh, at least the frame rate is really good now, and you can see uh, the grass is moving, we got some sun rays. Uh, that's primarily because my computer is really bad, uh, has a really bad frame rate. Um, so that's, that's actually my computer, not the game itself. Here's a new backpack that I created. It is 32 slots. So this is the biggest backpack in the game currently. I also created one backpack uh, that is slightly smaller than this, which is a 28 slot backpack. Backpacks will be uh, upgradable in a future update. Uh, but for now, uh, you just grab them from the box. So that's what the 28 slot looks like. One of the things I wanted to show in this video is uh, the crafting interface. I actually changed it slightly, so it looks a little bit different. The crafting interface now looks like this. So now it's a list of, uh, you can see on the left hand uh, side, there's a list of um, options to choose from. On the right hand side you'll notice that it's empty and that's because I have a plan for that space right there. So this is the new way to uh, use the crafting interface and I'm actually really happy with the way this is turning out. I'm still not 100% uh, completed. You may have noticed that there was a glitch just then and um, I'm, I'm very aware of glitches that happen in the game and that's pretty common. Uh, but it is something that I am currently working on. Luckily, it's not a problem with the server, it's actually a problem with the client, so that's... Whenever it's a problem with the client, that's an easy fix. I can easily uh, fix that. So right here, I'm just crafting a sword, because I'm about to get into some combat. And I managed to craft an uncommon iron sword. Iron swords are really powerful. They're a lot more powerful than crude swords or uh, or uh, whatever uh, tier was uh, beneath that. Somebody lured the bandit into the bank. I had to kill him. I tried looting the chest, but it says that the chest is magically binded to another player, and that happens because uh, a player hit the bandit first before I did. So the the chest is the chest automatically goes uh, to them or is awarded to the first person that hits the enemy. Now that I'm geared up and I have a sword, I'm going to show how questing works in my game. So to get a quest, you just talk to the quest giver or uh, an NPC. The dialogue comes up, and depending on the choices that you choose, will prompt, uh, will give you a little uh, prompt that asks you if you want to accept or decline the quest, and it'll give you some information about the quest beforehand before you uh, accept. And once you do, it'll give you the little notification. Your quest journal will have the quest in it, as well as quest information, uh, a checklist, a reward, and uh, a description. If you hover your mouse over the reward, it'll show you what that is. In this case, it says ability card, and we don't quite know what ability card it is. It's kind of a mystery. But anyway, to finish the quest, we just have to kill the bandit, and it didn't take too many hits because uh, again, we have a really powerful sword. Looting works by right-clicking on a treasure chest, and that'll that'll bring up the looting interface. 
There are three ways to loot. You can either drag an item to your inventory like normal, or you can right click on an item. Or the third option, which is to just click on the loot all button. Now, I would imagine that most people would not use the first method because that's a very tedious method. Um, but I can't imagine people using the loot all button or right clicking to select uh, what items they wish to have. Now that we've completed our quest, uh, in the quest journal it'll show uh, an X on the checkbox signifying that we have completed that task. All we have to do now is go to the quest giver to turn in our quest and he'll give us a reward. In this case we have a number of six different re rewards to choose from. Um, each of those six cards represents an ability card. And this is what the ability card looks like. In this case, we got uh, one called Power Strike. We can move the uh, ability card into our hotbar, just like I did right there. And you can see that currently it deals zero damage, and that's because strength is a multiplier, and currently we have zero strength. I'm going to change this in a future update. I think it's unfair that the ability deals zero damage, even if you have zero strength. But right here, I'm crafting some jewelry uh, to create a ring that gives me six strength. Once we put the ring on, you'll see that the ability will uh, deal some damage. Strength also increases your physical damage. So now Power Strike deals 60 to 186 damage, which I will admit is uh, way too much. I'm going to uh, lower that in a future update. But this is just a, de a simple demonstration to show that uh, factors such as strength uh, will affect abilities. You can click on the ability in the hotbar to, uh, to use it and it has a cooldown rate. You can also use your uh, keyboard, of course, but I don't actually demonstrate that in this video, but it is possible to use your keyboard. So that's how you use abilities. So now I'm going back to the house because I wanna show some of the other abilities you could have gotten from that quest. Um, these are the six ability cards, and each one sort of represents a different fighting style or play style. They kind of represent different classes, and in my game you don't actually choose what class you want to be, instead you just get ability cards that do different things depending on your stats. I have an ability called Toughen, which gives me five armor. That ability is influenced by the number of intelligence points that your character has. So the more intelligence, the more armor that ability will give you. I have Adrenaline, which is something similar, except it gives me five strength, also affected by your intelligence points. I want to show the healing ability in this video, but in order to do that, I have to take off my armor and uh, let the bandit hit me for a certain number of points. This is an ability called Soothe. It heals for five points, which again is not a lot, but it is affected by the intelligence points. Currently I have zero intelligence points, so it doesn't heal for very much. The reason why I've designed the game this way is because I want players to decide their play styles and fighting styles. So they, they could have an incredible ability, but unless they have the intelligence points 
um, it won't really uh, do as much. Okay, so I just um, I just used an ability called Weaken, and what that does is it lowers the enemy's strength. So he should hit for fewer damage, but it looks like he's actually hitting for high numbers, and that could be because he's rolling high numbers on the server. I'm going to show abilities with higher potential. In order to do that, I have to create something that gives me intelligence. Alright, so here's something that I'm making using two uh, Tiger's Eye, and that gives me an, a necklace, which gives me six intelligence. And you'll notice that once I put this on, my intelligence will increase and the abilities now are more potent. The Soothe spell now heals for 17 instead of 5. The Adrenaline and Toughen spells give me 11 strength and 11 uh, armor, respectively. There's my Sprint ability, and what that does is it increases my speed uh, by 50% my uh, movement speed. So there's all the abilities all at once. And the abilities are very powerful when used in conjunction with one another. I'm going to make combat a little bit more challenging, uh, but of course, the harder the challenge, the, the bigger the rewards. Here's what uh, buying and selling uh, looks like in my game. You can go up to uh, an NPC merchant and bring up the merchant interface. You can buy and sell items here. So to do, to do that, uh, you just drag an item to sell it. But you can also buy items by selecting an item and then pressing buy. It checks your money on the server side, so if you don't have any money, of course it's going to say you don't have enough. I also have a merchant that sells herbs and potions, kind of like an alchemist type uh, NPC. And a merchant that sells textiles and leathers. I'll have many more merchants in the game. So far I only have three, but there's going to be many more uh, buildings and merchants and NPCs and stuff like that. You may have noticed these uh, different kiosks here, and these are stores that players can claim. You can see it says unclaimed, but in order to claim it, you just right click on it, and it'll have your name on there, and other players can actually see that. This is the store interface. You can sell up to six items. To sell an item, all you have to do is drag an item to the interface, and then you can set the price and click list. And once it's listed, other players will be able to purchase the item. Now you can only sell up to six items, but I am probably going to increase that number to at least eight, but maybe more. We'll see. I'm thinking more. So here's an example of a player coming to your store. They would right click on your store to bring up the interface and then they can purchase an item. And once they do, you'll get a notification as well as a sound effect. So you can see in the interface, the item is gone. Here's the other player's store and when I right click on it, you can see the interface. You can select an item and press buy, and that's 
basically how you buy and sell uh, with other players. That's in addition to trading too, which I've shown in a previous video, but uh, the nice thing about kiosks is that um, it's not as bothersome, so you don't actually have to bother players. You can just leave your store, uh, you can leave your store unattended and players can pass them by and check out the items that you're selling. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And follow me on Leonamai Dev on Twitter. Um, I will see you in the next update. Thank you and see you later. Goodbye.